Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my mission over the next um, nine and a half minutes is twofold. One, the most important, more important, is to not keep you from your lunch. And the second one is to stress, for me, the importance of one word, and that is context. So what I'm going to talk about is the kind of things that have, we've already heard about, but... I'm going to talk about it from the context of Hefke, and then I'm going to attempt some ideas which may or may not be useful in Libya. And one of those ideas will be, ignore everything that I say. Okay. Um, I, I have the um, privilege to be the um, Council's International Relationships Manager. It sounds uh, very grandiose. Um, I manage a team, a very large team of 0.6, and here I am today. So, as, um, as our chairman said, we are a very important organisation in terms of funding higher education in England. That is in transition, as Bob told us about in the first um, talk in this session. Uh, and I'm going to tell you about the kind of things that we're doing now, so you get an idea of what context I'm coming from, and then I'm going to talk a little bit and tread carefully into the Libyan context. Uh, so the mission of Hefke, which is uh, on our website and the thing that we um, bow down to every day as we go into the office, is that we promote and fund high quality, cost effective higher education in terms of education, research and also knowledge exchange. And so there are the various tasks that we carry out. I won't go through them in details. detail. Um, we do allocation of funding to universities. So when people talk about government funding to universities, it comes through an intermediary body in England, and that is Hefke. Uh, small fact, we are, the major, we are the largest single funder of research in this country. Um, how do we do it? Well, we've got 15 board members. They're appointed by the Secretary of State for Biz, that's the Department for Business, Innovation and Skills, but are not accountable to him. So the board of Hefke is sovereign. Once the board has made a decision, informed by all of the policy development work of my very much cleverer colleagues within the council, then the board decision is final. The most, one of the most important things that the board does is to um, hire and fire the chief executive. We've just changed our chief executive. Our previous chief executive, Sir Alan Langlands, has gone to be a vice chancellor at the University of Leeds, sorry, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Leeds, and his successor is Madeleine Atkins, who previously was Vice Chancellor at the University of Coventry. Um, the other members of the board are a mixture of people from institutions, mainly Vice Chancellors, but there are also people from outside, because we want to be challenged. We are often challenged in the press, and we're challenged by the sector, and we are internally challenged by the, the board. You can find out details on our website. Um, there are about 250 of us, so probably slightly more than there are in this room at the moment, but nevertheless a relatively small organisation for the power that we carry in the land. Here's one of the most important, for me, messages about the UK sector, and that's again to echo what Bob said in the first talk and that is about autonomy. So we distribute higher education funding, but it goes to an autonomous sector. There are checks and balances, and I could talk a long time about those, but in basic terms, the universities get on with it. Because why would you want a useless bureaucrat like me telling universities what to do? My knowledge of mathematics, which was at one stage fairly good, but that's well over 30 years ago, so why should I tell anybody about the future of mathematics? It's best done within the sector. So autonomy of institutions, I think, for me, is paramount. Um, and that means all of those things that are listed in that first slide. 
hire and fire the staff, select the students, so all those sorts of things. We work at arm's length, both from the government and also from the sector. And this is a personal observation at the bottom there. Governments in, an, in a democracy have a, a short life span, if you like, and therefore a, a, a temporary view. In the UK, the temporary view goes to May next year because there will be a general election on May the 14th or whatever it is. So their view is very, very short term. Universities have been about for centuries. We've been around as Hefke since 1992, but we can trace our ancestry back to the Universities Grants Committee just, that was formed just slightly after the First World War. Um, I, I was encouraged that one of the stats that, that, which is on here echoed one of the ones on Bob's, <laughs> which is that 14% figure. 14% of the most highly cited papers come from this country. This country only represents about 1% of the world's population. What do we do uh, as HEFGI? Well, we're about ensuring and enhancing quality, so we work with various agencies, and more of that in a minute. Uh, we're interested in protecting and promoting the interests of students. We're interested in that student mobility agenda, which various speakers have spoken about already today. And one of the things that we've been engaged with recently in the wake of the change of fee mechanism in this country is providing information, hopefully disinterested information, to prospective students and their advisors. So it's not advice, it's information. Uh, we're interested in uh, the development of learning technologies, Open University, as uh, Dr. Fati was talking about earlier, and we're interested in investing on behalf of students, and also the public interest. Um, in terms of research, Bob talked about the complications of the dual support mechanism. We, we are much more um, laudable of that. We, uh, we like the dual support mechanism at Hefke. We think it works well. Maybe not for Libya. Um, we're interested in sustaining public investment for the future. And that means that we want to invest in the future. And the future are postgraduate students, postdoctoral assistants, those sorts of things, the people, not necessarily the ones who've reached the top of the tree already. And one of the mechanisms that we use is rigorous assessment of research quality, which is the REF, the Research Excellence Framework. We, Hefke, have run research assessment exercises since 1986 on behalf of the whole of the UK sector. We will publish the results on or around the 18th of December 2014. It's our Christmas present to the sector that we give them about every seven years or so. So that will be watched with great interest in the sector. Now, this is where I step into uh, territory where um, you may or may not wish to take on board what I suggest. Some of the things that I think, and again, this is a personal view, not a Hefke view, because we're a truly autonomous institution. I didn't pass any of these slides past anybody at Hefke. The organizers asked me to give a talk. I sent the slides. So, cliff view, not Hefke view. True institutional autonomy, as was pointed out by Dr. Fatty, I think that that is highly important. And I think that that is the way to go. Because the best um, judges of the future of the HE system are the people working in it and leading it. One of the things that we do is we monitor proportional to risk. If an institution has been low risk for a long time, our monitoring processes are very much at a light touch level. If things get difficult, and there are called celebs, even in the, um, the, the, the UK system, uh, if you Google London Met, you can see what happened. Um, appropriate governance arrangements and leadership development, those two go hand in hand for me uh, because when uh, I was out in Tripoli with the Leadership Foundation just over two years ago, we talked about the importance of leadership and strong leadership and the response was, we know about strong leadership, we've had it for 42 years. 
So strong leadership has got to be moderated by governance arrangements. So if you look up on the website, I'm sure if you look on Bob's website, the University of Huddersfield's website, it will give details of the way that the institution is governed rather than led or managed. And that's my next point, management training. And then quality assurance arrangements that are robustly administered and are independently verified in some sort of way. And then, um, that, that, that's not a computer glitch, the, the um, uh, space there. You might wish to consider having an intermediary body in order to be able to keep the politicians away from the system. You might, okay? So, that's some of the things that might be useful to Libya, uh, Libya's HE system as it goes forward. Some of the things that might not uh, are all the things that we built for this tremendous edifice of higher education in the UK. A plethora of agencies and quangos. And the primary one of those is us. We are a quango writ large. So there's Hefke and the other funding councils. There's the Student Loan Company, the Quality Assurance Agency, the Higher Education Academy, the Leadership Foundation, UKTI, already asked a question, the Research Councils, UCAS, he's, oh, and it goes on and on and on. That might not be good for a system which is moving from the low level that Dr. Fatih has just described to a more mature level. And then I think sometimes we get mixed up in our system about the complemented complementarity of our universities against co uh, versus cooperation versus collaboration. And uh, again, the, going back to my context thing, taking tools and using them out of context. The REF works, we think, for us, might not be useful for Libya. Um, one of the things that's always been a, a a difficulty for our system is there has been that research teaching divide in regard of career development. So research is the primary way still in this country that you get preferment. And that might not be good for a system which wants to develop from the ground up. Um, and the H is political football. Um, again, some of the things I've talked about um, we, in this country, um, do protect, if you like, the sector in some way from the, the politicians, but they want to intervene. And so the political football um, is one that comes up an awful lot. And then, this is with the one where I'm going to say, and, and ignore everything that I've said, okay? Because I think if you're going to have uh, a development of the system, if you're going to use experts, then you've got to form a long-term relationship. You don't helicopter them in to provide solutions. That's why all of those are in inverted commas. I think what you need is a sustainable, long-term relationship with a few key players. And then one of the things that might not be useful to you, as I've already said, is, is a hefke. So I've had about 11 and a half of my 10 minutes. I will stop there. And thank you very much. And uh, I think, well, no, I'm not cheering. Thank you very much.